my job is to start the ball rolling and then, and then give the microphone back to uh, Mr. Red, Reverend Redden. Um, I have the happy responsibility and pleasure of thanking uh, the sponsors for this event and also uh, to talk a little bit about chess history in Detroit and how the youngsters fit in and carry forward. So that you know, uh, I started my competitive chess playing career at what is, used to be called Post Junior High School in the northwest side of the city of Detroit. And I played on the team at Mumford uh, so long ago that uh, it was before there was good. And it wasn't always true that chess was powerful in Detroit, but it is true that it has been powerful and is very powerful now. First, let me start by thanking uh, specifically and calling the names of the sponsors. I want to specifically and uh, particularly acknowledge the presence of the Ford Vice President Bill Dirksen and UAWG, uh, UAW, whoops, that was the same, Ford uh, Vice President Jimmy Suttles. Would you two please stand up and be acknowledged? sponsorship and support from MGM Grant Casino. Uh, unfortunately, the representative from MGM Grant, who would normally be here, is tending to her sick son, who's recently been hospitalized. But I'm sure we all appreciate what, has, what they've done and what they will continue to do to support uh, the youngsters and your parents. So please give them a hand as well. several members of the board uh, and the executive leadership of the uh, Detroit City Chess Club and Young Detroit Campus. Uh, Coach Flood will never stand up in a room like this to get it acknowledged by uh, applause. T.C. Anish will never stand up to be acknowledged by applause. Uh, I'm going to suffer for having called her name, uh, but I will, I'm happy to uh, suffer that. Uh, because she and the other board members deserve our thanks and your applause. Please stand up, each and all of you. Please stand up. Detroit in 1924. 
1933, the U.S. Open was again held in Detroit, and I believe again at the same place. This is in the depths of the Depression, the very bottom of the depths of the Depression. And the two best players, I'll tell you about in a second. The guy who finished third in that tournament was a man named Arnold Day from Portland, Oregon, who was an extremely strong, very famous player. And for some reason, the world didn't give him a grandmaster title until just about the time of his death, or just after his death, when he was in his mid-80s. He played here in Detroit, came third. Who was good enough to beat such a good player? Sandy Ryszewski and Ruben Fahn, who in 1948 would be two of the top six in the world to play for the world championship. And they played here in Detroit. And in 1951, the U.S. Open was again held in Detroit. It was one, I think, Ben Cashton or one of the other great, great, great players from Europe. Good. Not Larry Evans, it was just before his time. And then in the mid 60s, or late 50s, early 60s, Wayne State University had an extremely strong championship that was led by two guys that you might know or heard of. One of them is named Wesley Burton, who still comes to tournaments. And the other was Ben Feingold's dad, Ron Feingold. Detroit, Wayne State, right here. And then we had a little period where maybe we thought things weren't so strong in Detroit. But we had John Brooks, didn't we? Yes, sir. Right? And we had strong tournaments. And in 1991, the U.S. Open was held High Regency in Dearborn, which was won by Gregory Haidano. And he didn't come back to Detroit until 20 years later when we had the first Michigan Chess Festival. And I think many of you know that Grandmaster Haidano and Grandmaster Alex Lenderman and Grandmaster Irene Crush have all come to Detroit multiple times. And they've been rich chess in Detroit. And now we have a situation where we have young masters who have been produced by this club, young aspiring masters, some of you in this room, produced in this club, perhaps more than just a national championship team or two, right here in this room. You stand on a rich history. You make us incredibly, incredibly proud. We look at your parents here. I'm speaking of the parents. I think I can speak for the parents here to say that when we look at you, when we look at what you've accomplished and what we know what you're going to do, it makes us hopeful, proud, and enthusiastic and grateful. Well, I think I've done my job. It's time for Sherman Redden to come back and take it.